Welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're gonna create a black and white ripped photo effect. For this project, we're gonna start it in kind of a different way because we need two projects that are basically the exact same size to start with. So we're gonna select all of our image, whatever image you have. You're gonna go edit, copy, or control C. Then you're gonna go file, new, and don't worry about changing anything, just click create right away, and then go edit, and paste. And by doing that, we have made a duplicate kind of project to the one that we started off with, which allows us to mess with this one and then bring what we create back over to this one in the end. Just make sure you're working off of the duplicate project and not your original image. The next thing we're going to do is go over to our rectangular marquee tool. So if you don't see it here, right click, it's right there, rectangular marquee tool and we are gonna make a box. So try and get it to be as much of a square as possible or close to it. You can see in the top left of my selection, there's W for width and H for height. Just try and get it to be somewhat close to each other. And really what we're trying to do is create a similar gap on this side to this side and maybe a little bit bigger on this side if you want. Once you've made your square selection, go up to the top to image and go to crop. Now that's gonna make a new canvas size for us that is more like a one to one ratio like Instagram, let's say. Now that you've cropped your image, go up to filter and go to filter gallery. In here, you can select any filter that you want or none, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna select poster edges and my settings are edge thickness around three, edge intensity is right down to zero, and posterization I have at one. And I'm gonna click OK. The other thing that I wanna to do to my image is I wanna make it black and white. So if we go down here to this little circle, half circle thing, and click on it, that's your image adjustments, I'm gonna add black and white. On there, there's these sliders here, and each color represents the original color of the image. And I'm just going to try and create a very contrasty look for mine. So I'm pretty happy with that. And now it's time to apply our paper effects to this. So you need some sort of paper effect like this. I just found this one on Google. It's called crumpled white paper. You can probably find this one and use the exact same one. And then I also have this one here called ripped newspaper PNG. Probably, I don't know. I have, I probably downloaded a few times five but get one that looks like this, like a, has a ripped edge on it, and get one that has a texture on it. To start, we're gonna use the texture one, so I'm gonna go to my Move tool, and I'm just gonna click, and I'm holding down the click, and I'm gonna drag it over to my other project, and then I'm still holding the click down, and then I'm gonna let go. The only problem is it's too small, so we have to go Control-T to transform it, and just stretch it out so that it fills up the whole frame and then click check. Now we're just gonna go over to our blend modes here where it says normal, click the little drop down and put it to multiply. And I'm just gonna downplay it a little bit to, I don't know, in the 80s somewhere. You decide whatever you think looks good. And then we're gonna combine these layers. So click on that paper layer, hold shift, and then click on the image. That'll select everything in between. Then we're gonna go Control E, which is gonna merge them into one layer. Next, we're gonna apply a Polaroid or Instagram type border. So just go to your image, right click on it, and go up to Blending Options, and select Stroke. Don't click on the little check right here. Click on the actual word Stroke, so you get this menu that pops up. Make sure your color is white and that your position is inside. If you if it's on outside, you won't see anything. So make sure you switch it to inside and then just use this slider to decide how big of a border that you want it. So I want something that's kind of like that and then click OK. Now that our image is set, we're gonna bring in our other ripped paper that we have. So again, I'm just gonna click on it and then drag it over to my project, drag it in and then let go. And with this piece of paper, all you're doing is going Control T and you're gonna rotate and resize it into place. Just make sure you pick the edge that you think is best for the rip. So if you have a piece of paper like this, like mine, 
then look at both edges and see which one you prefer. I kind of like this one better. And then just rotate it and resize it to the spot that you want it. So I think about there and click check. Now, I only have this one strip, so if you have a bigger piece of paper, that's better. But because I didn't, I'm gonna use the rectangular marquee tool to draw a rectangle. I don't care about this half at all. I only care about maintaining this edge. And all I'm gonna do is go edit, fill, and I'm gonna change contents to white and click OK. We now need to make another copy of it. So we're gonna make sure we're clicked on our layer and go Control J to make a copy. And with this second one, we are just going to Control T again, and we're gonna head up here to our angle and just put 180. We're gonna flip it all the way around and click check. Then with our move tool over here, we're just gonna line it up so it overlaps. You don't wanna see any gaps right now, just make sure it overlaps, because I think it looks better later. Now that we have our two ripped paper assets, we need two copies of our image to go with them. Before we duplicate it though, we're gonna right click, not on the thumbnail, on the word right here, and select rasterize layer style. That will apply the stroke, like the border, to the image. Then we're gonna go control J to duplicate and drag one of them above this paper asset and drag the other one above the other paper asset. Then all we're gonna do is click on the top image, hold control, click on the paper asset that's right underneath it. It's gonna make a selection that looks like this. Then go down to this box with a little circle in it and a, add a layer mask. Now just go and do the same thing with the other one. So click on your image, hold control, click on the paper asset that goes with it, and then add a layer mask. Now we just have to move our images over a bit to create the kind of edge rip effect. So click on this one and with your arrow keys on your keyboard, just click to the right a bit. And you can see that you're gonna create that little rip effect. You can go as much or as little as you want and then do the exact same thing with the other one, but this time going left. So you can move it left a little bit and create that rip. When you're satisfied with what you have, hold control and click on the paper so that they're both selected and then just go control E and that will merge those two layers together. Before we repeat the same process with the other one, just click the little eyeball to get rid of this and maybe even the background too so we can kind of see the edge better. Then just repeat, click on this one, but this time go to the left, nudge it over to the left a bit until you get the paper rip that you want and then hold control, click on the paper asset, then control E to merge those together. And if you click on the eyeball, you'll see that we now have both halves of our ripped image. But we still need to do one more thing before we bring them over to our original image. The first part of that is to make sure that our border is consistent. So right now the top and the bottom are thicker than the sides. So I'm gonna click on one of them and just use my arrow keys to kind of nudge it over to make sure that that border looks good. And then I'm gonna click on the other one and nudge that one over to the right to make the border be the same around the whole thing. Once you're satisfied with that, then just go over to your rectangular marquee tool and you're gonna select everything, okay? Select the whole entire canvas and then just go up to image and go crop. And then just to make sure, go to the other one and go image and crop. I think it does it to both, but just, just to make sure. Now we're ready to bring these over to our other image. So go back to your move tool, hold control and click on both layers and then just click and drag back to our original image and let go. Now all you're gonna do is go Control D to deselect and select one of them, go Control T, and you're just gonna move it, rotate it, resize it, and place it wherever you want. So I'm gonna make this one maybe a little bit bigger. I like when they're not the exact same size. Then check to set that one, click on the other one, Control T, and place it maybe over here somewhere. So it looks like it was ripped in half and she is in the middle. And then the very last thing we're gonna do is add a drop shadow to each of these. So go over here to one layer, right click, go up to blending options and click on the word drop shadow. Make sure you can see what you're doing. And I would say play it very subtle. So if you look here, I'm gonna click on this check. That's without it and that's with it. 
So I have opacity, I have it on multiply, opacity around 35%. My distance is 20 and size. I, I just make sure spread is down. It looks, I don't think it looks as good when the spread is up, you know, maybe fairly low like that. So just play around until you get a shadow that you like and click OK. And then the other one should be easy. It should be the same setting. So click on it, right click, go to blending options, click on drop shadow, click OK. Now, if you don't like having both halves ripped and you just want one half to be regular and one half to be the rip, then just click the eyeball on one of them and go control T and place this one in where you want it. So you can line this one up and create more of a regular, just one side ripped in half look instead of having both. And that's about it. That is how you create the Polaroid or Instagram photo ripped in half effect in Photoshop.